Here you go. Oh, dude. Here you go, bro. Found some of the ring. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Today is the day. I'm gonna be taking the RX-7 apart, pulling the motor out of it. I'm hoping that the damage isn't too bad. I'm hoping I can save the heads. Uh, they are nicer heads. Uh, and they do have dual valve springs retainers and it does have a cam and it does have uh, ARP head studs So hopefully the heads are good and then hopefully the cam is also good. Hopefully I'm, I'm hoping nothing crazy happened. Maybe we just snapped the rod and it just stayed in one place But I guess we shall see here in just a little bit probably take me an hour or two to take this all apart First things first I'm gonna start with is taking the whole turbo setup off and then draining all of the uh, coolant and oil out of it so the way I set this up is it's super easy to pull the motor and trans at the same time. So I am just gonna uh, undo the drive shaft and undo the trans mount, motor mounts, and then pull it all the way out as one. That is what we will be doing. Wyatt should be coming over later today too. Uh, I don't really know a lot about motor stuff and he knows a lot about these small block Chevy. So he's gonna come over, look at everything and see what we need to get. Once I get the new motor set up in it, and I go back to the dyno, I'm gonna leave it on like about 15 pounds and see what it makes. Hopefully somewhere six to 650. And then after that, if I get bored of it, I may put that big single on it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started on this and get this done. So, got the chain hooked up for the tray picker. I got everything taken off that should uh, need to come off. So Carlos is over here with me, gonna help me really quick pull it out and then I gotta run to the shop and grab some stuff. But I am gonna end up trying to leave the transmission in the car. Uh, I can't rotate the motor over, so I can't take the converter or loosen the converter bolts and leave the converter with the transmission. So hopefully I can get it up far enough and then pull it far enough forward to get the converter out of the input shaft on the transmission. I have a jack underneath the tranny. I will be taking the tranny out once the motor's out, but for now I'm gonna try to pull just the motor. So I already got all the motor mounts and everything loose. All the transmission bolts are off of it. Gonna go ahead, hook the tray picker up to it and then Hopefully yank it out, take the heads off, see what the hell happened. As you can see, got the motor out, came out nice and easy. Took the converter off of it, obviously. Just gonna go ahead, take the chain off, take the heads off, see what happened. You look angry when you're doing that. Yeah. Oh, I know, <laughs> you look angry because I'm recording you, huh? Yeah, Yeah. always. You're just mad I'm recording you, you bro. This? The broken spring? Oh yeah. So, this does have dual valve springs and retainers on it and this, uh, the outer spring is all broken to pieces. All right, so this is the side with the messed up spring. So you take yes. the side off first and see, leak a lot of coolant everywhere. Yeah, just all over yourself. Yeah. Ah. Oh yeah, baby. We done with one of them. Holy crap. Look at that. Look oh, how bad shit. that is. Oh, you can't see it on the camera here. Let me get a light. Yeah. So this is uh, the passenger side. This is the bank that I was monitoring. So who knows, it could have just broke from just too much power on that Gen 3. So it kind of sucks, but. This one has nothing to hold on to. Watch out for the, with the showers. Yep. This one's got some damage on it too. Really? Yeah. Damn. Oh, what is that? Probably part of a valve, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. It's a chunk of something. Chunk of piston, maybe? Now remember, kids, this is why you buy Gen 4 stuff. Solid. Oh man. It's not even that much of it. All of it's like underneath the windage. Tray. Yeah, pretty much. Dang. Your oil ring. There's probably part of the rod. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Let's see how bad it is. 
Okay. I can take this off. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, this isn't bad at all. <laughs> oh, man. oh my goodness. Dude. <laughs> that was a good one. I honestly can't believe, cause like, you guys saw from the dyno video, it made a pop, a bang, a little bit of smoke, and then it was still spinning, and we shut it off right away. It didn't window nothing. I honestly can't believe this is all that happened. I'm sure the cam is bad on it, so I'll probably get a different cam for it. But yeah, this is, looks like nothing is gonna be savable from this at all. So it's all good though. One of my neighbors at the shop has a complete Gen 3 heads, everything, intake manifold, everything on it, exhaust manifolds, oil pan, everything. So I'll have to get that from him and then I'll be taking the Gen 3. Yeah, look, this is what stopped it. This is all right seized there. in here. Yeah, this is wedged. Yeah, the, that's the one that I could see through this the, is all, in this tray. Yeah, this is all wedged in through it and then so is it's this part of the here. piston. Yeah, so we snapped this one right here, snapped it clean off on this side. You can see the rod is all snapped right here. So, yeah, solid, huh? Yeah, that's crazy, dude. It's got that Bluetooth rod. It's basically a pretty common theme with the Gen 3s. I mean, I could have, I mean, clearly it's just making too much power, but I mean, there's a wrist pin. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> Look at how out of round this is, like how old it is. The wrist pin's stuck in it. Oh yeah. Like it's all flat, flat spotted right here from getting smacked around. But, I mean, it's pretty common for these Gen 3s to snap rods like this. I could have had too much timing in it, too much power, too much whatever, could have leaned out, who knows, but a lot of times, it's just Gen 3 stuff, you know? I mean, 800, it was probably made close to 800 foot pounds of torque and it just snapped. Yeah, is that kind of like the limit for the Gen 3s or what? Um, no, people have made more power on them than that, but I mean. I mean, it's, it's definitely just, risking it at that point though, right? Yeah, you're just flirting with death, really, is what it is. Like, it's it's not a matter of, if it's gonna go, it's just one. Not too bad. <laughs> not too bad for my my first motor that I grenaded like this. I mean, I, I would give you a, a 8 out of 10. 10. Eight out of ten, bro. I guess that's because true. you didn't. Really if you made a hole in the block, maybe you'd get a higher score. But you know, yeah. dude, there's so much chunks down there. Alrighty, so as you can see, there's a lot of carnage from that. I talked to Nick, the person who used to have this motor. He was saying that he's done this before. I got a wrist pin and I got part of a rod, so he thinks that maybe I pulled a wrist pin out of the piston, and it caused it obviously to grenade everywhere. So snapped a rod on the one side, and there's no piston to be found. Basically, it's all just chunks of piston everywhere. So that's what he thinks happened. I have no clue what happens. It probably just broke from just too much power. The tune was probably okay. Um, it did have 15 degrees of timing into it and it was 11.8 air fuel. Now the one side that did go was the side that I was monitoring. At first I thought maybe it was the driver's side that had let go because it wasn't the side that I was monitoring and maybe it was lean or rich or who knows, but it was the side on the passenger side that I was monitoring. So. Who knows, just Gen 3 life, not too mad about it, pretty happy with it. This thing has been abused to hell and back. Uh, when Nick had it, he had it for three years before me. The first year it made 650, the next year it made 780, 800, and then the year after that, right before I got it, it made 900 horsepower in a Camaro. And they beat the shit out of it for a whole year before I got it. So it was abused quite a bit before I got it and it had a hard life. I'm gonna go ahead and get a whole new motor for it see if I can salvage the cam and um, maybe the springs that it has. I appreciate all you guys watching and uh, be sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And don't be discouraged, it's not gonna sit for the rest of the season. I am working on getting a motor here very soon and hoping to have it running and driving within the next two to three weeks. So thank you guys for watching and until next time guys, see ya. here gonna make y'all some good lunch do it we got cheese in there y'all want some fucking cheeseburgers <laughs> don't worry daddy we gonna fill all you little children up you better not kill me how many are we making brother all of them as much as you can fit